Hi, I'm head of Amazon PR, Jeff Gives a Shit, and I'm here to tell you that we're here to save America's shopping malls. We've not done it up till now because we've been very busy destroying America's shopping malls. The blame game never gets us anywhere, so let's not focus on who undercut whom until who was out of business. Let's just say that America's shopping malls are safe in our hands. Here's the real reason Amazon is buying shopping malls. I'm Simon Kane, and these are my terms of service. Part one, owning the land. Mm, is there a problem? A big one. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. You don't build an empire off a 1.4% cut of a 15 cent hamburger. You build it by owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. You see, for McDonald's, burgers is their side hustle and renting their land is their cash cow. Success always leaves clues. McDonald's discovered early that you can't really build an empire selling burgers, but you can make money in real estate. But how do the franchisees make money? By selling the burgers. It's pretty clever and scary. Amazon makes more of its money by owning the land or ecosystem in which other companies need to operate on. This could be Kindle for books, AWS for cloud hosting, or now physical land for offline sales. Amazon is building a massive logistics company to get things to us faster than ever before. So if you, the little startup, can't do next day delivery because you're not a logistics company or roadrunner, impatient customers might not buy from you. And in such a competitive, crowded marketplace, you can't really take that risk. In short, we need our shit and we need it now. And we largely don't care how they get it to us. So now you not only pay Amazon to list and ship the product, but you also pay them to store it. 89% of people are more likely to buy something from Amazon than any other online retailer. Once more for the people at the back. Only 11% of people are privileged enough and care enough about human rights to not buy stuff from Amazon. This means that Amazon have both a worldwide recognized brand and trust from consumers. <laughs> all right, not all of them, but enough of them. These are two things that most startup brands can't achieve quickly, which is why they're more than happy to piggyback on Bezos for a faster route to market. Essentially, Amazon is as synonymous with e-commerce as Tinder is with unsolicited dick pics. This means that Bezos owns the digital land on which up and coming e-commerce companies need to operate on. And when you own the land, you own the market. And when you own the market, you don't really have any competitors. So it's safe to say that Amazon owns the digital landscape. What would come next? Part two, owning the sky. Wee. Not content with just owning the e-commerce space, Amazon set its sights on owning the sky by hosting all of the websites and content from all of its competitors with its cloud computing platform, AWS. AWS currently owns 33% of the cloud computing market, with its next two competitors, Microsoft and Google, having 18 and 9% respectively. To put this in terms you won't understand, Amazon is Zeus, Microsoft is Hera, and Google is Apollo. According to my analytics, 4% of my views come from Greece. You're welcome. And their customers are no small fish. We're talking blue chip, Fortune 500, mega profitable, buzzword heavy, faceless corporate entities. Why would they use Amazon's products when they could set up their own hosting? Well, the director of engineering at Netflix, Vinka Chawla said, we used to have to maintain an in-house solution for emails. Amazon's simple email service was flexible, affordable, highly scalable, and had a global reach. In essence, it doesn't matter to Netflix that they're using a competitor's tool because Amazon have the money to do a land grab and want to invest now so they can own the market in the future. So it currently owns the biggest slice of the pie, but analysts reckon it'll be worth a lot more just in the next couple of years. One million dollars! It's safe to say that as long as they don't fuck it up, Amazon owned the digital land that e-commerce sites need to operate on, and now, with all these clouds, they also own the sky as well. And if you break one rule or piss them off in any way, you're gone. Part three, what land to own next? I bet you thought this section was gonna be called something like owning the sea. Well, I did try and make it work, but I had to drop it in the final edit. Sorry to disappoint. Amazon has been flirting with brick and mortar stores for a few years now, with bookshops, hairdressers, supermarkets, housing, and more. So by buying, refitting, or building their own department stores, they not only own the land that other retailers need to sell their own products and services, but they've lowered their own costs, so they can now experiment with their own label items and technology, which it can then sell back to other retailers. Knowing what clothing to sell is notoriously hard and has a massive return rate. So by offering things like interactive changing rooms, 
Amazon can get more data on each customer, as well as new technology which it can sell to other retailers, as well as get a competitive edge over other shopping centers while cutting back on returns. Talk about having your cake, eating it, and getting a blowjob from it as well. According to Wells Fargo, Amazon is already the largest clothing retailer in America, and it reportedly did this by copying the best-selling items on its e-commerce site and undercutting the sellers on its own platform. I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego. And go fuck yourself, Jeff Bezos. Amazon's contactless supermarkets use cameras to collect biometric and behavioral data from every shopper. They could use this Orwellian technology at a wider scale in their shopping centers. This would tell them things like where to put their adverts or which store locations are the most popular and give them to their own product lines, which isn't so much getting a competitive edge in a free market, so much as it is playing God in a version of The Sims that you coded. They could track you the old school way through public Wi-Fi, as malls today currently do. But why bother when they can just use cameras on their own private property? Sorry, I'm just gonna have to plug you in. I've done a whole video on Amazon's contactless stores and how they're gonna use all that behavioral data on you. Link below. What? It's a cheap plug. Other specific advantages a shopping center offer Amazon include showcasing its own smart tech, including Fire TV, Kindle readers, Echo speakers, and more. Cheap land in Prime, a eh? A, eh? which they might not get planning permission for right now, but the mall was already built. Former shopping centers turned fulfillment centers tend to have great transport links, which is great for low paid staff to get to work on. And finally, data, lots of data. If they know that X number of people have been looking at certain products, Amazon can use that information to put those products in their malls, making it even more convenient for their shoppers. Part four, are they running out of land? Yes, we all are. Mark Twain once said, buy land because they aren't making any more of it. This could explain Jeff's current obsession with taking his rocket, the SS overcompensation, into space. It's both the final frontier and new land for him to own and rent back to us at silly rates of interest. It could just be an ego thing, or both. I don't know, I'm not a psychologist. All I know is that Amazon's business model is currently splitting away from selling us stuff into owning the spaces that competitors need to sell us stuff. This is a great way of keeping their competitors on a tight leash, but also gives them enough data to know what's trending and what they should sell next. Part five, but I thought the high street was dying. Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Can you repeat the question? You're not the, boss of me now. the high street and shopping centers aren't dying. Hot take, I know but they do need to become more of an experience to pull customers back in. Larger experience-based shopping centers with slides, roller coasters, or exclusive amenities are thriving, but bog standard malls are not. People are buying more than ever, just not on the high street. So shopping isn't the issue. The reason is partly consumer habits are fueling Amazon's growth, but also because most businesses don't offer something that the online world can't compete with an experience. Being able to go to a shopping center and sit on Santa's lap is not something Amazon can easily replace. I don't want to go and sit on an old man's lap in a warehouse, again. In business, if you don't evolve, you evaporate, and that's why the high street is dying. Not because people don't want to buy stuff, but because they want an experience. Look, if I'm going to put my big boy pants on and risk getting a deadly virus, or worse, having to make small talk with my ex, I'm going to need a fucking good reason to leave the house and the fact your mum and pop shop has been there for a hundred years is not gonna cut it. Now look, if your mum and pop shop offers me amazing customer service and a product that I can afford, I'll be there all day long. How do you think this guy has a business selling rubber ducks? I can buy them in bulk on Amazon much cheaper, but I don't. I go down to his shop and I browse them like a fucking adult. 